Hi there, my name is James. Welcome to this video on benign fasciculation syndrome, BFS for short. Um, I've been suffering from it for about four to six months now, mainly in my calves. Um, it's pretty much constant there. I do get twitches other places in my body, but I'm not sure if that was if, if I was suffering from that before and now I just notice it more. But it's constantly in my calves. Some things make it worse. Um, it's normally better, you know, during the night if I haven't had too much caffeine or alcohol. Um, and by the morning it's kind of just a little bit but then it doesn't take much to trigger it again but I've got a couple of videos that explain my experience of it so far that you can watch in this video this is for people who have maybe not done much research on it maybe they've just discovered that they've got muscle twitching and they're trying to learn a little bit about it so what I'm going to do is uh, cover what we know about BFS so far um, the latest research findings so what I'll be doing is flicking to some different websites medical websites and also research papers that have been written on it um, to give you sort of the academic um, information and what they know so far which isn't a lot I can tell you that um, then also the causes of BFS as far as they're concerned and also I'll cover some examples of what I've heard from going out into the community of people who suffer from it and listening to their stories and reading about how it's uh, um, affected them, what's maybe caused it for them as far as they're concerned, what the medical establishment believe can be a possible treatment, my own experience as well so far, and um, once again, the one particular treatment that seems to crop up again and again that helps people get rid of it completely. So let's carry on and have a look now. So here we're at a website called healthhype.com. So it is characterized by occasional or nearly continuous twitching of various skeletal voluntary muscles in the body. So as an example, the heart is a muscle, but luckily that doesn't get affected by BFS. So these are voluntary muscles that you can um, choose to uh, contract and relax yourself. So this type of muscle twitching can also be seen in association with serious disorders like spinal injury. I think you'd know if, if you've had spinal injury and that's potentially the cause for your BFS. Multiple sclerosis, which I don't see come up a lot, to be honest, of people saying they've got MS and then muscle twitching. But the ALS, that's one that, as far as I was concerned, in relation to motor neuron disease, I wanted to be sure that that wasn't what I was suffering from. And ALS has a very different type of muscle twitching. Um, obviously you need to go and see a doctor and get this tested. My doctor, for instance, just did the old um, knocking on my knees and knocking on my elbows to see that I had the proper reflex there. They took some blood to do some tests with and about three, four weeks later they said you don't have any degenerative uh, motor neuron disease, it's BFS. Let's hope they're correct. I'm uh, taking it they are and it made me feel a lot better. So this is one of the things related and you'll come, we'll, we'll see this again and again as we go through this, this short video where um, you see that stress is very much related to BFS. Um, and it goes on to say here, this can sometimes make benign fasciculation syndrome patients extremely anxious about the twitching due to the similarity of symptoms. And uh, once again, anxiety and stress seem to be very much related to BFS um, and it's something that I see in people's comments and what people who actually suffer from it say again and again. So another interesting fact about BFS is according to neurology.org, um, a prospective study of benign fasciculation syndrome here, it's very common in a general population occurring in about 70% of healthy individuals. Now I'll point out again that it's very, very uncommon for the muscle twitching to be ALS. Once again, you need to go and get proper medical examination, but it seems like it's very rare that it's a motor neuron disease. So that's some good news. Some of the other symptoms um, that you get, once again, anxiety. Um, it seems to be that uh, from what I can see from research and once again, listening to people in my own um, uh, experience of BFS is I was ex I had an extremely stressful episode the, the year um, anniversary of my mum passing away 
and one of my businesses was failing badly. I had a lot of stress from quite a few areas of my life, which is really unusual because I, I normally manage stress in my life very, very well. But this time it just got on top of me. And this is basically when it started. And it seems to be common with a lot of other people. Um, and I'll come on to again in a second some other examples from research where they make a link between stressful situations and the onset of BFS and also the fact that uh, normally BFS comes in tandem with stress and people suffering from anxiety, stress, depression and psych uh, psychological issues. Um, pain also, luckily I don't um, suffer from pain including uh, muscle cramping. Um, and fatigue. I don't get fatigue myself, but you may experience fatigue along with um, the muscle twitching. Um, other symptoms, numbness, tingling and pins and needles and muscle stiffness. So the causes of BFS, apart from it being linked to stress, which, you know, depending on which paper you read, um, stress causes it or stress may not cause it, but it does seem to be one of the symptoms at least that comes along with it. But other examples of what can cause um, BFS are certain drugs, drugs like anti-cholinergics and they are, let me have a quick look here, I looked it up, they're substances that block the action of the neurotransmitter and uh, at the synapse level of the peripheral nervous system. And that's interesting because they believe that BFS is neurological, although they don't know whether it starts from the brain or from the central nervous system. They don't think it's the central nervous system due to the fact that uh, you can have it in parts of the body that would be predominantly um, the brain affecting it, which, which leads them to believe that it actually originates in the brain, but simply they do not know. So other examples are opioids, like morphine is very much linked to it. I'll come on to that in a little while because that also links on to a potential cure. And I use the word cure very, very lightly in this sense, but I have tested um, uh, magnesium myself and morphine and opioids cause a deficiency of magnesium. And when I take high doses of magnesium, I find it actually very much relieves the muscle twitching. But I'm figuring out at the moment how much magnesium I can um, use as a dosage because you have to be careful with some of those minerals and supplements that you don't overdo it in one area, it causes a depletion in another. Another example of what can cause it and has come up in research as well again um, is exposure to certain insecticides. Um, we'll come on to that in a little while. And here it mentions the deficiency of ma uh, magnesium and micronutrients. So you should get your blood tested just to check if that is an issue. And I've had um, a terrible episode a few years back which was caused by potassium deficiency. It wasn't uh, diagnosed, or sorry, that, that, yeah, that diagnosis wasn't given to me by the doctor. I had to discover that myself. But that um, was a, a cure for something that was, was terrifying for me. And the doctors completely misdiagnosed. But within, um, it was about 12, with, with, within about 20 minutes of taking high doses of potassium. And then within 12 hours of taking it, all of the symptoms I was suffering from which were horrendous, had disappeared. So in this article here, this is some research by some doctors who have uh, looked at a comparison of psychological factors between patients with benign fasciculation and those with ALS. And uh, you'll find that a lot of the research is along this line, is that they're trying to look at the difference between BFS sufferers and ALS sufferers. So there's not a lot, in fact, I don't think there's been any research into looking for a cure for BFS. The reason is the word benign in the fact that it doesn't kill anybody and most people after a period of time return back to normal. So there's, there's very little research into it, whereas ALS, there is research, they do have donations, and there's money invested into it. So what they're trying to do is clear the, the BFS sufferers from the ALS sufferers. But what's interesting in this, in the discussion, which is down here, is what they say about the BFS sufferers 
in that they had a history of psychiatric illness, or at least a high number of patients did. Their fasciculations generally occurred at the time of significant life stress, which I've mentioned before and seems to come up again and again, such as divorce or some other traumatic event. These patients also reported psychosomatic. Now, psychosomatic means um, uh, illnesses that are um, in the brain, but they affect the body. So the mind is affecting the body. Um, so these are psychosomatic symptoms such as irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, headaches, heartburn, anorexia, weight loss or weight gain. Such patients appear to be preoccupied by the presence of fasciculation and seek multiple medical evaluations. And this is because maybe they're already stressed like I was and therefore they're looking to be 100% sure that it's not some kind of motor neuron disease um, and instead is just BFS and muscle twitching. So it's interesting there that again stress, anxiety, psychological or psychiatric illnesses are coming up again in relation to BFS. So some of the other causes of BFS, this is according to an article in Medical News Today, are um, strenuous exercise and I must admit that's something that potentially could have caused my BFS as well. Um, I do a lot of strenuous exercise, a lot of heavy weight lifting, um, drinking alcohol, virtually never drink alcohol. However, when I do, wow, do my muscles start twitching a lot. So I'm, I'm glad that I don't drink alcohol because my muscles twitching goes way off the scale when I do drink, um, especially the next morning. Smoking cigarettes, I don't smoke, thankfully. Um, I'm not surprised that that's in there as one of the, the examples. Fatigue, um, I don't suffer from fatigue, so I, I can't tell you whether that causes my twitching to be any worse personally, but caffeine. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with caffeine. Caffeine, I discovered, caused, or not didn't cause, but made the a serious back injury that I had when I was in my 20s. I couldn't get rid of until I stopped drinking caffeine. I was told by a medical professional who, um, after years of doctors and physiotherapists and chiropractors and all sorts, this chap told me, stop drinking coffee, stop eating sugar, and your bad back will um, go away. And it did. It took me a lot of attempts to give those up. And every time I started drinking coffee or eating sugar again, lo and behold, my back problem or what, were, what I was left with of, of a serious back problem would come back until I learned not to have it. However, I've discovered that if I um, don't eat carbohydrates and sugars, essentially, because carbohydrates are sugar, then I can get away with having some caffeine without causing it a, a, a back problem or joint problems. However, it does bring on my muscle twitching quite a lot. If I drink caffeine, my, my leg it twitching um, goes off the scale again. So I do try and keep away from caffeine. Now, looking at magnesium and its link to BFS, um, I've, I've seen, found this article here related to magnesium and drug abuse. This will be opioids and morphine and things like this, and how it has quite a large effect on um, the effect of drugs. Um, and also a couple of other things that spring out to me and that is the GABAergic system and NMDA receptor activity. Now, GABA is interesting and, and it's linked with magnesium and BFS because GABA is something that I've been studying for a long time as a supplement. And GABA, according to Wikipedia here, is the chief inhibitory neurotransmitter. Um, and it's the principal role is reducing the neuronal excitability throughout the nervous system. Now you can buy GABA as a supplement and I've suggested that people maybe try GABA to see if it has any effect on reducing the signals from the brain to our muscles that are causing the twitching. Something that I need to buy and test myself. I just haven't had time to look into which GABA supplement to buy um, to be sure that it's, the, it's a good one. But we'll look at some more information on the magnesium here and the how it can affect our, our health. And this is the, um, an article from on the Wayback Machine, actually, but 
um, symptoms of magnesium deficiency. Um, they are outlined beautifully in a recent article by Dr. Sidney Baker. Magnific magnesium deficiency can affect virtually every organ in the body. With regards to skeletal muscle, one may experience twitches, cramps, muscle tension, muscle soreness, including backache and neckache. Now, I could say that I suffer from some of those things. I would say sometimes that it's maybe from exercise and, and muscle soreness, but I also know that a lot of muscle soreness is dietary related. So, I, you know, years ago, you know, delayed onset muscle um, soreness is something that I, I virtually never get because of the diet that I maintain um, just stops it from happening. Most of that is caused by toxins that go to the muscles and cause the soreness rather than it being actually the muscles themselves um, being sore due to being overworked. Um, the other thing you can get is experience chest tightness or a particular sensation that you want to take a deep breath a lot and sometimes a person may sigh a lot. Now I would say that's me as well. Um, and uh, we can go on here. Now this one, I've forgotten the term for this, but it does come up in relation to um, benign fasciculation syndrome. And it basically feels like you've got a lump in your throat. One of the people on my channel contacted me asking me about that because he had suffered from it. And I suddenly remembered that about two years ago, I think it was a year or two years ago, I went to the doctor because I, I had this, felt like a lump in my throat every time I was swallowing. Thought I had throat cancer, of course. Um, the doctor immediately, great doctor, this old chap, and he says, just looked to me, he goes, ah, yeah, he said, uh, global, globus, global light something, global something, global, globus. Anyway, um, and he said, all it is is this, like, muscle that kind of tenses, massage it and it will go away which it did within a few days and it came back partially about a couple of weeks or a couple of months later and I massaged my throat again and it was all good. So there's one link to the magnesium issue there and on top of that I, I happen to have um, a whole um, cupboard full of different supplements that I take and ZMA for instance zinc and magnesium I have in high dosage with calcium because it needs that to actually work properly and I found, found um, about uh, 10 years ago that if I would take a, a really high dose of zinc and magnesium and calcium before I went to bed at night I slept like a baby and up to that point I'd had a couple of years of having really bad sleep you know not being able to get to sleep waking up not being able to get to sleep pop a ZMA sleep like a baby and also have the most amazing dreams so if you're if you're certainly if you're an older chap and um, this doesn't um, work for women unfortunately but if you're an older guy especially try some zma you'll sleep like a baby take it about 20 minutes before you go to bed so there's some, some information on magnesium i find that when i take a lot of magnesium it really reduces the muscle twitching but like I said, I have to find out how much I can take because I don't want to take too much magnesium and throw some other mineral or vitamin out of balance, which could have a knock-on um, negative side effect. So I just need to have a look into that a little bit first. Um, normally I'd have a lot more time to look at these things, but right now I'm, I'm quite under a lot of pressure with work and other things. But I will get to it. I'm also going to try the GABA. Um, let me know um, how you're, you're doing, what your experience is. There is a questionnaire, and I'll put a link to it in the comments, that is asking people for their experience of BFS. Um, and you can add your um, suggestion for your own question as to what you might want to ask people. And what I'm hoping is that together we can collectively build up a picture of what potentially is causing BFS, what people may have believed to have been what uh, was the trigger for it, what makes it worse, and also what makes it better. Now, on that note, like I said, I've looked at a lot of comments by people on forums and on uh, YouTube channels, and one of the things that I've noticed is that some people have got immediate relief from muscle twitching by going to see an osteopath. So, 
it may well be worth you going to get that looked at, especially if you have back issues in any form or have had in the past. Because although you may have had a fall or you've had a bad back months ago or years ago, just because the pain goes away doesn't mean to say the problem has and that could be causing the twitching. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe this video so that other people get to know about it. Um, and hopefully we get in touch and share stories and help find a way to, if not cure BFS, we can certainly improve it for a lot of people. Thanks a lot and take care. Bye-bye.